We all fall and face failures in life. It's what you do after you get up that will change your life and the lives of others. In her 35-year water ski career, world champion Christy Overton Johnson fell every day. In the midst of her falls and failures, she became one of the most decorated women water skiers of all times, holding the world record in women's slalom from 1992 to 2010 and accumulating over 80 professional world titles. In 2013, God used a simple visit with an incarcerated friend to open Christie's eyes to the hopelessness of life behind bars and the need for imprisoned men and women to know the God of second chances. This is her story. This is today's Nashville. This is Faith. Christy, I'm so excited that I finally get to sit down with you, that you're here in Nashville, you're here a lot, and to share your amazing journey. I love how God brings people together because I met you years ago. So happy to sit down with you. Yeah, I'm excited to be here. And we've been talking about this for a long time, a so I'm long, glad it finally happened. A long time. You know, I have to be honest with you, I started Googling you after I found out you were this world record holder water skier, which I love because I grew up water skiing also. But then I started thinking, you know, we had spent some time together and I thought, who is this Christy Johnson? Because you have an amazing story of, you know, 80 titles, world record holder from what, 2010 to 1992 it? to 2010. Yes, a, yeah, lot. a long time. So, and then, I, you know, I have to tell a story. My husband went down to North Carolina, couldn't find this place that he was supposed to be. And he's like, it's Christy Lake. And she, the, the Uber driver said, Christy Lake. Everybody knows where Christy Lake is. <laughs> Let's go back to that time and tell me about you you know, growing up water skiing. Yeah, so I was four years old when my father, Parker Overton, decided to share his love with this, of the sport with his daughter. And so we went out on the Pamlico River. I was four years old, and he said, baby, when you're ready to go, tell the boat driver, hit it. And so I said, hit it, and off I went. And by the age of five, he was entering me in tournaments. My mom was my boat driver, my coach. We were traveling all over the world. Wait a second, four years old. Yeah, I didn't have you, much of a choice, I don't think. <laughs> could you swim then and everything? I or? guess I could. I don't know, but you don't have to know how to swim to ski. You got a life vest. Were you scared? I don't remember being scared. I remember it being exciting. I remember always loving the fact that you could learn something new every time you took to the water. So by 13, I turned professional. And so you're talking about Lake Christie. That's in Greenville, North, outside of Greenville, North Carolina. My dad knew that I needed a place to train, and we had been training on the Pamlico River. So he bought a track of farmland and actually dug a lake and named it Lake Christie. And then my brother's name's Michael, so it has two islands in, in the lake called Michael Island. So we would be out there from the time I was 11 years old, and we actually live back in North Carolina now and spend a lot of time at the lake, and it's just a blessing to be there. But when you're 11, 12 years old, you just think everybody's got a lake. You know, I didn't quite realize all the sacrifices that my parents were making for me to be the best in the world. And we had a wonderful journey for 35 years. I competed all over the world, met my husband because of water skiing. He wasn't a skier, but he had a lake in Orlando, and I needed a lake, so that's where we ended up. So as you're training, as a young girl, in your mind, were you thinking, hey, I want to be a world record holder? What were you thinking? Did you know that you were being trained for yeah, a championships? You know, my father, at the age of four or five, when I was four or five, he would come and kneel by my bedside at night to say prayers, but he would also cast vision. And he would tell these little stories of a little girl named Christy who became the best water skier in the world. So there was never a time in my mind that I didn't see myself as a ski champion, 
but it was never about going out to beat other people to be the champion. It was about being the best that I could be, and that's what he always taught me was be the best that Christy can be, and you'll, you'll finish up on top because I had a, an, a, an incredible ability to water ski. I love that you say that when you started water skiing, you fell every mm -hmm. single day. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I tell people I competed 35 years, trained, and fell every day because you can't learn something without falling. But in the midst of those falls and failures, I became a world champion and a world record holder for 18 years. And so that just tells me that it's not your falls and failures that keep you from being successful. And it's not about perfection. It's, it's about getting up. It's about continuing to say, hit it instead of I quit it. And it took you all the way around the world. Mm -hmm. Tell me about some of those experiences. Oh, we skied in Russia. We skied in Singapore. I what, what was it like in Russia? And it was cold. <laughs> it was windy, but it was interesting. And I didn't know that one day I would be back after I competed there. God downloaded a heart, a love for the Russian people and to adopt from that area. So I ended up adopting two children and went back, not for skiing, but to get my kids. Isn't that amazing? Mm -hmm. So from Russia, Singapore... Oh, France, Austria, Australia, trained on the River Kwai in Bangkok and just went all over. So where was your faith at this time? I was always a believer. Uh, there was never a time that I didn't know that Jesus Christ had died for my sins. But I like to tell people um, I was like a water skier that believed in the power of the boat. I'd even picked up the rope, the lifeline, and got connected through my faith in Jesus Christ. But I sat on a spiritual dock for decades. And it wasn't until my mid-20s when skiing was actually taken away from me because of some major um, medical issues that I had. And for the first time, I couldn't be a skier. And the first time I realized my whole identity is wrapped up into this thing that I'm doing. And at that point, I finally surrendered my life to the Lord, my skiing to the Lord, and realized I needed a relationship. He was Lord, of, he was Savior for many, many years, but he was not my Lord. And when I made him my Lord, it changed everything. So what happened after that? He took me on some adventures. <laughs> so did you completely give up skiing? No. Though? You know what? I was always afraid if I followed God, I'd have to give up everything that I loved. I think a lot of people think that. Yeah. Think? All he wanted to do was use the things he had given me an ability to do, to use my passions and desires. I love coaching people, working with people. I love sharing experiences with people. And then he took that platform and all those trophies that, you know, if they don't have eternal purpose, all they are is a trophy on a shelf. It's just a, pay, it's just a paycheck at a tournament that you spend within a week. But when you give it to God, he takes it and he turns it into something that has purpose. And that's what he did with water skiing. I love that. And you went from water skiing, and then you were coaching. You do a lot here in Nashville mm -hmm. with the youth, and we're going to talk about that in a little bit. But, but from water skiing, he took you to prison. He took me to prison. Yes. We're going to talk about that when we get back. <laughs> 